In this video, we're going to learn what is a connected graph and also what is a regular graph. So let's start with the idea of connected. What I'm going to do is draw an example of a connected graph and then an example of a disconnected graph. So let's first do the connected case. This is an example of a connected graph. And over here we have an example of a disconnected graph. So let's see the difference. Mostly what we can tell is that in the disconnected case we have some vertex over here which is all by itself and it's not connected to the rest of the graph. But it doesn't have to be a single vertex that's by itself. Here's another example of a dis disconnected graph. Notice that in this case, we don't have a single vertex that's all by itself, but we do have two pieces of the graph. We have a piece over here and a piece over here. And there's no way to get from one of the vertices in one piece to the other side over in a different piece. So that's what we mean by disconnected. So let's be very clear about what exactly is a connected graph and define it now. A graph G is connected if for every pair of distinct vertices, u and v in the vertex set, there is a path from u to v in the graph. Let's see if this definition makes sense in terms of our examples. If we take a look at the example of the connected graph and you pick any pair of vertices, you'll be able to find a path that goes between them. In fact, this particular example was indeed a path. But pick any two vertices you like and you'll always find a way to get from one to the other. If you look at any of our disconnected examples here and you pick a particular vertex in one of the connected parts and another vertex in another part, you'll see that there is no way to get from one of those to the other in this graph. And that's why they are disconnected. So the next important idea is to get into what is a regular graph. And in order to understand that, we need to first look at something that we call the neighborhood of a vertex. So let's draw an example. Here I've drawn a small example on five vertices. And if I look at a particular vertex, for example the vertex A, and I ask what is its neighborhood, all I'm asking is what are the other vertices which are adjacent to A? So we would answer by saying, okay, well B is adjacent to A and so is D and so is C. So let's write this down. Let V be a vertex in a graph G. The open neighborhood of a vertex V in G is denoted N sub G of V and it's equal to U such that UV is an edge of G. Well this makes perfect sense in terms of our example. Let's take a closer look. If we use the definition of the open neighborhood and we ask ourselves what is the open neighborhood of the vertex A in this particular graph up here, so let me call this graph up here my graph G, then the open neighborhood of the vertex A is equal to B, C, and D. And it follows exactly this definition. It's all of the vertices U such that UV is an edge. When we're looking for the neighborhood of A, we just look at all of the edges which are incident with A, and then we find the other end of that edge. So in this case, the other end is B, over here the other end is D, and over here the other end is C. And that's how we get our open neighborhood. You may be wondering why I've described this as the open neighborhood, and that is because we do have the concept of a closed neighborhood as well. The closed neighborhood is equal to the open neighborhood union with the vertex V. So in our example, if we were taking a look at the closed neighborhood of the vertex A, we have the closed neighborhood is equal to B, C, D, and A. So all of the vertices in the neighborhood, the open, as well as A. So why do we worry about defining the neighborhood? Well, the reason why the neighborhood is so useful is because now we can really carefully define the degree of a vertex. The degree of the vertex is just the number of edges that are incident or touching that vertex. So if we look at this example, our vertex A has degree 3 because there are three edges incident with it. But a nice way to define the degree is in terms of the size of the open neighborhood. So the degree of a vertex V in a graph G is equal to the size of the open neighborhood. 
If we look at our example here and we try to figure out what is the degree of all of these vertices, we can count that very easily. We can look at vertex A and find its degree. It's three, that's the size of this open neighborhood, which is three. If you look at vertex B, it's clear that the degree is two. There are two things in the neighborhood of B. If we look at E, we only get one. We look at D, we actually get four. It has the highest degree and C has degree two. So now that you understand the degree of a vertex, we're able to talk about which graphs are regular. Let's just scroll down to give ourselves some more space. So I'll leave the definition of degree at the top because that's extremely important in terms of the definition of regular. A graph G is R regular if the degree of every vertex V is equal to R. So this is for all V in the vertex set. So that's the definition of R regular. Let's take a look at some examples. Here I've drawn a four cycle and in general any cycle is going to have degree two everywhere. So that means that cycles are two regular. Now let me construct an example which is going to be three regular. If you take a close look and check every single one of the vertices in this graph, you'll notice that it has degree three. So this is a three regular example. Three regular graphs are studied so often that they have their own special name and that is cubic. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Sometimes when you learn a new concept, it's useful to see a non-example. So let's think about a non-example, something that is not a regular graph. It turns out that paths are not regular because some of the vertices have degree two and some of them have degree one. One really nice example is the case of complete graphs. This is the complete graph on four vertices, which has degree three everywhere. So it's three regular or cubic. But in general, if you were to have the complete graph on n vertices, then that would be n minus one regular. That's quite easy to see because if you think about any particular vertex in the graph which has the complete graph but of order n, then any particular vertex, let's call this vertex v, is going to have to be adjacent to every other vertex by definition of the complete graph and so it's going to be adjacent to n minus one other vertices. Finally, we have two nice pieces of notation which deal with the degrees of particular vertices. We can denote the minimum degree by a special character. The character is a small delta of G. Similarly, we denote the maximum degree also by delta of G, but in this case, capital delta of G. So if you have an R regular graph, then you know that the minimum degree is equal to the maximum degree. In fact, that's all equal to R because you know the graph is R regular. So by now you should be quite familiar with these terms of R regular or two regular or cubic and all these sort of terms. So now you should understand what a connected graph is and what an R regular graph is. We will continue to use these types of words and terminology in the next videos. So see you next time.